Hey guys, how's it going? Zombie here with Xenar Gaming. And with Gamescom 2024 this week, we got an awesome look at the new upcoming game, Dune Awakening. In this video, I'm going to be going over what I saw in the 27 minute gameplay release video and talk about what I'm excited for when the game comes out early 2025. With that out of the way, guys, let's get into the video. When the player starts the game, you will be given the ability to create your unique character from a variety of different facial and physique adjustment options. Anywhere from your character's plan of origin, the hierarchical background, and pregame mentor for the character. Each of these options will shape your avatar into a unique creation to match your liking as well as determine their starting skill and how I believe that NPCs will react to them. Once you have finished creating your character, they will be subjected to the Reverend Mother's test to see if you can be considered a human or an animal, just as the characters were in the movies. Once the test is over, which I believe will only stay as a cutscene and will not be a playable part of the uh, game, you will awaken on Arrakis and begin your journey. While watching the gameplay footage, it shows that the player will have to scavenge for weapons as well as crafting materials that will be used later in the game to craft newer weapons, vehicles, and specialty equipment. While on the desert planet, the player will also have to keep their character out of the sun for prolonged periods, as well as gather moisture from uh, and water from plants and fallen enemies in order to survive the harsh environment of Arrakis. Long periods in Arrakis' direct sunlight could inflict the character with heat stroke, indicated with the meter at the top of the uh, player's HUD. Too much exposure to highly concentrated spice areas can also have an effect on the player, although we haven't been told too much about that yet. But you'll have to stay out of direct sunlight uh, due to the harsh environment, like I said. I believe probably water will go down faster and potentially even lose health, but... We'll have to see when the game comes out. The game will be a third person shooter with Assassin's Creed type climbing in certain areas and the ability to use grappling hooks and suspension belts to traverse cliffs and uh, base walls quickly. This can come in handy for quickly getting to sniper and overwatch positions to help allies clear bases and protect them from incoming players in PvP areas. A large variety of weapons were seen in the trailer including swords, hunter seeker drones, and the uh, Mala, the Mala pistol, which I'm sure more will be added to the game in the future. The game will also offer dungeon areas known as Imperial Training Areas with high loot rewards at the end once completed. We haven't been told uh, yet what party size limits will be in either the PvP or PvE areas, but judging from gameplays, it appears that it can be at least anywhere from three to five players in a group at any given period. After each fight, players will have the chance to loot fallen enemies as well as extract their blood in order to convert it to drinkable water later on at the player's base. Just know that in dire needs, players can drink the unpurified blood, but it will come with some debuffs, so if not an emergency, it's best just to save that blood until later and convert it to the water. Next, let's talk about guilds and player bases. The base creation reminds me of Power World with what we've seen of it so far. Players will be able to set down a central point of their base known as a sub sub fife. I know I'm probably saying that incorrectly. A console which will allow the player to begin building their base in a certain area. Players can then have their friends assist them and not only designing the base, but building it as well. If you have a friend who is really good at base design, which personally I'm not, then another player who is good at gathering resources, then the first player can design the base, leave, and all the, pl all the plans will remain as uh, see-through walls and structures 
to be created later by anyone in the group who happens to have the materials and wants to donate them to the creation of the said base. This can also be done when building vehicles as well, allowing pl multiple players to contribute. If none of the players are good at base design, or if there are players that excel at base design, you can actually um, create blueprints, which can be made and saved, allowing you to recreate parts of your base again at a later time. Or you could actually sell the blueprints in the games and the in-game exchange, but we haven't been given any additional information on this function as of yet, just that it does exist. Dune Awakening will offer both PvE and PvP areas, allowing for safe zones to build and research, as well as NPC bases to attack uh, without the interference of other players, giving the chance to play the game solo or cooperatively with friends. But the game will also grant the ability to fight in the PvP areas, known as the Deep Desert. Most likely, the Deep Desert will be where all the highest tier and most profitable gear and loot can be located in the game, presenting players with a high-risk, high-reward mentality. Doom will also offer dynamic world events that will catch the eye of any players in the area, possibly creating a PV PvP type of situation because other clans may be trying to collect the same rewards you are working to collect. You will see ships falling out of the sky whose cargo can be salvaged, but players will have to be quick as they as, as if they wait around too long. They may encounter other players as well as the worms that are located in the desert as well. Listen to the preview. It sounds like players will not be able to run into other players in PvE areas, but that those areas will be specifically for the player and any friends that happen to also be online or either that either any friends that are in that server or in the player's party. We will have to wait until the betas or until additional information is released before we know for sure. But we do know that there will be towns that players can visit, which will be public areas where players can meet, granting the possibility to, cre to create or join guilds or joining smaller parties. The town will also be where you can collect missions for story progression purchase new weapons and equipment or ally yourself with one of the house factions in the dune universe the atreides or the harkonnens one of the final events the trailer shows off is conflict between players trying to harvest spice the preview shows a large explosion with dark clouds and purple light which personally i thought was awesome as these spice fields are mentioned ex to be exploding to the surface in the books, but not seen um, to do so in the more recent Dune movies, nor the one from the 1984 release. This cloud will be noticeable from very far away, calling all clans or players in the area who are planning to harvest spice to converge and fight over the spoils. But remember, as it was said in the Dune 2021 film, a worm, a worm always comes. Players can use thumpers to call worms, shortening the time that you have to harvest, even if you win the fight, or if catching you off guard, causing you and the remainder of your team to be claimed by a maker, as the worms are called by the Furman in the, in the story. Now, the last thing I want to comment on in the preview was the ending where the battle is over and if you look closely you will see that the sand dunes are starting to move and just as it looks like the last player in the area is about to die the player uses a grappling hook type of device to grab onto an allied ship that comes to the rescue of any survivors two reasons why this scene got me excited was one it recreated an iconic scene from the 2021 dune movie where Paul and Duncan are rescuing spice harvester workers from a sandworm. And it also hints that transport ships may not only be to where you just click a button and you're in or out of the ship, but that you can open the back and walk in and out, which opens up the possibility for players to not only swoop in to rescue allies, but maybe you can have one person piloting one of the ornithopters, as they're called, 
and another shooting rockets out of the back at some of the heavily armored vehicles that we saw in the gameplay video or potentially uh, providing sniper cover while players on the ground are trying to retreat. That's it for the video guys. If you found any of this information interesting or if you are excited as I am to get your hands on Dune Awakening, please make sure to comment below as well as subscribe to my YouTube channel as I intend to cover all the Dune Awakening news leading up to its release in early 2025. Also make sure to like the video as it helps out the channel. Thanks again for watching guys and I hope to see you in the next video.